So my name is Kyle Roach. I'm the general manager of AWS IoT. Uh, so thanks for coming to learn more about the product today. Um, it's kind of watching the launch there myself and listening to Werner talk and all the kind of device examples he had up there. And I was kind of thanking myself he wasn't monitoring my blood pressure or something like that. So, so that was a little bit rough. But um, I'm going to skip a lot of the, uh, the sort of marketing hype behind IoT. I think we all understand that this is a big deal. Devices are connecting. They have been connecting for quite a while. This is actually not such a new uh, trend. You know, back in uh, 1990, um, a guy named John, he uh, took a connected toaster to a uh, kind of an, an open source um, convention. He brought with it a big, enormous computer, probably the size of the, the Snowball device or something like that. It had a TCP connection. It was talking SNMP, but it was basically the first consumer sort of connected device example. You know, and as these things sort of take hold, we get this idea, you know, that particular connected device was a year after the proposal of the World Wide Web. So it takes a while for these iteration cycles to kind of run. We get ideas, we get refinement, we see sort of a lot of the same things over and over until it really starts to take hold. And, you know, for that to happen, you kind of need all the right building pieces. And Werner talked about, as you know, his sixer turned into seven and then eight laws after that. But the, the kind of the components and the building blocks that exist to put together an IoT app you know, that's where we really get into that acceleration and into the traction phase at the end. So I thought of a, an example um, that I heard at a conference last year. It was about a uh, computer scientist looking at a, a assisted assembly. He basically took a bunch of um, Lego bricks and put it into a washing machine because that's what computer scientists do. Um, so after a you know, bunch of iterations, kind of, kind of like the cycle that we have now, you know, we're running and we're running, we're seeing different examples of connected products, enough of these cycles in the washing machine, and the connected toaster came back out, um, no, which obviously didn't happen. But uh, lots of different sort of stable structures were created. And what, what was interesting about them is they're all sort of the same. So given you know, a machine that's assembling the pieces that you have to work with and the blocks that are provided, you don't really yield sort of innovative results. So you know, that, takes, that takes the customers and the partners uh, you know, in, in the, the SI community, the ecosystem that we have, to take the building blocks that we're putting together and, and making something meaningful uh, into IoT. That slide's not supposed to be there. So, <laughs> uh, so you know, the point is really that, the, you know, there's a, these building blocks do exist, right? So we're launching, as part of AWS IoT, we're launching a hardware ecosystem. Uh, partners like Intel, Broadcom, MediaTek, a bunch of others that Janesh will talk about towards the end of the session. On the other side, the event-driven compute phase, you know, what DynamoDB and Kinesis have already been doing in the IoT successfully for years. All these pieces together, when you put them, you put them together, you get sort of the full spectrum. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to add a couple more building blocks, and that's where AWS IoT comes in. <laughs> more extra slides. So Sonos, Sonos is a great customer. They just had a, um, they had a session downstairs, and I love this quote from them. It was basically a device that existed before it became connected. It was already successful in the market. They have a customer base. But the connectivity drove really another era of innovation around the product. And they were able to do things with their product that they weren't really even thinking of when it was just running inside the house. And so the, the key point about this quote I think we want to take away from, from what this product, AWS IoT, does is that the product can start to evolve and improve itself even after it's physically constructed, manufactured, and, and sent out the door. Great. Uh, <laughs> So AWS IoT, how do we get out of this sort of spin cycle? So it's, you know, it's about addressing the protocols that devices are talking you know, at a managed scale, uh, adding security that works for devices. So devices don't necessarily communicate the same as humans do. So we have a whole different set of building blocks in that arena as well. And then how do you get this information into a useful state and consumed by the application stack, either web or mobile? And I talked a little bit about the SDK and the ecosystem that we're launching, and we'll go through that uh, later today. So uh, one of the key points, though, is, is this is a fully managed service. So some of the other platforms that are out there, you manage your shards. You're spinning up different size boxes. You have to predict and tell us really how your product will grow in the marketplace. This is a lights out managed service. You can connect one device today, start playing with it, or a million, or good for you, maybe more than that, right? So this is what AWS IoT is. It starts with a device gateway. This is a central component. This is the data ingestion layer for the product. So it's, it's a highly scalable, elastic uh, sort of termination point for the device traffic. Now, there's going to be a lot of talk about this launch and the protocols we selected. 
And like everything we do, we talk to our customers first and we work backwards. MQTT is a protocol that's been in the industry for a while. A lot of our customers use it today and they've asked for that support, so we've added that as part of the launch. HTTP obviously is a common protocol both for web, mobile, and connected devices. We'll continue to add more. The key thing about the device gateway is it's not protocol specific. So we're adding WebSockets soon after launch. The tag is still in beta right now, but you'll see WebSockets before we go live. All of these ingestion protocols are made to pair with what we're doing with our hardware partners and our SDK partners to get your device securely connected to the internet. So we have a certificate store. Um, you can basically use our CLI, our API, to request a certificate to identify and secure your device to the front door of AWS. This is a very different pattern for us. So like I said, Kinesis and Dynamo have, have, have done great things with their customers in the market already around sensor ingestion, but the devices have to be powerful enough to basically have an identity that AWS can understand. So with this API, you can start to create certificates and identities and then use familiar tools like IAM roles and policies to secure and identify how that device talks to AWS and what other services we can pass that data on through uh, down the pipeline. So this is a very important piece. Uh, Eric Brandwine, one of our lead security uh, developers, has a, a session, a full dedicated hour on this topic, uh, actually right after this one. So. so the rules engine, all this data is coming over the wire. It's going back and forth. You know, how do you make something of it? So you saw a couple, two different uh, products today that we talked about that are both adopting a pattern of SQL streaming. So obviously MQTT and HTTP for telematics is not a streaming based protocol. This is a, a pub sub sort of pattern, but we have a similar approach to how we want our developers to solve these problems. So if you look at a, actually I'll talk about the rules engine a little bit, but if you look at SQL, it's, it's a way to take patterns that we're used to, that applying to data that's at rest and applying it now to data over the wire. So that ingestion engine, or the ingestion engine with the rules engine gives you the ability to start to transform make calculations on the wire, and do important kind of uh, calcu you know, business logic uh, within the system, but also pass it on to other AWS products. So we introduced a new concept called the device shadow. Uh, real quick, I'll just um, mention the device shadow is a completely optional component. It's a new pattern to bridge web and mobile developers to the world of the connected product. So if your device talks MQTT, your web developer does not have to learn how to talk MQTT to communicate to the device. So it creates a logical barrier uh, for abstraction if you want to use it. The shadow also talks over all the different protocols that device gateway supports. So you can use it the same way you talk to everything else. So all of this is wrapped inside our, you know, our AWS IoT API. And, and I wanted to mention this because uh, the nature of connected machines is so different than sort of uh, what we see going back to the cloud core today. So the edge is very important for us. This is one of the first services to launch with a fully cloud front point of presence enabled control plane API. And we'll continue to do our work and talk to our customers about what other pieces need to be moved down to that cloud front point of presence. The device registry sort of encapsulates the rest of the, the story, right? It gives us kind of a way to identify stored data um, about how the device is used, what are its capabilities, what are its firmware versions, things like that. So we're gonna get to it. We'll start with the device gateway. We'll talk for a second about PubSub, just to make sure we understand the pattern. Um, the idea is some devices are talking, some devices are listening. So I can have a control unit say something like, yeah, I want you to turn your, your light red. The device picks it up on the other side. This is all done over what we call topics. So topic is a word we borrowed from MQTT. When we add WebSocket support, these are called channels. Again, anything you talk on, you can listen on a mirrored protocol. So I can have a device talk MQTT, Eventually my web app will be able to listen to that in real time and respond over WebSockets. So the topic is sort of the center of how the device messages move through the system. So again, all of this is secured with TLS mutual auth, which we'll go into a little detail after this. So fully managed system, it's not really about one-to-one -one device to control unit. It's never really about that. It's about many-to-many, -many, right, and many-to-one. So we look at all these publishers in the field and all these subscribers, they have their own set of topics. They're listening to wildcard topics sometime. Sometimes they're getting instructions from another machine or from the cloud core itself. So this back and forth between all these devices at scale is really where the, the gateway comes in. We're gonna move the demos to the, to the end here, so. So going to the authorization. So I, I talked about this already. Uh, some of these new patterns, so TLS mutual auth, 
is very different for, from what you see with like a basic uh, web SSL sort of session. So in the current world, what we have available to us is the certificate and the key sort of protected on the server side. We can still pr create that secure pipe to the user, but we have no way to really identify them unless we force a login or use another, another system to, to let them kind of tell us who they are. So what we've done differently for devices, because devices can't do the same sort of behavior, is we've created an API that will generate the certificate and the private key pair for you, send it over the wire in a secure session. You can grab it and burn it into your firmware. So it's a quick and easy way to get a device connected without assigning an, uh, an AWS ID to it, without adding a new IM uh, credential. And you can use the same roles and policies that you're used to today to secure that pipe. So this is a look at sort of um, some of the CLI commands that, that you can experiment with today. Uh, so you can create the key and certificate. That's the one I talked about. If you want to go a little step further, you can get your own CSR and bring that to the front door. We'll finish the process for you. And then once that certificate's created, you can go into fine-grained uh, permissions around like um, the publish and subscribe patterns, things like that. So there's read, there's write, there's ways to go around um, wildcard protocols and protect, or wildcard topics and protect things like a certain control topic within a broader stream. So the rules engine. Um, rules engine, on, on top of all these messages that are going back and forth, uh, if you think of a topic as a table in a database, the, the query sort of uh, gives us a way to start looking at the data ahead of time. So you post a static SQL statement to the API, and then this basically behaves as like a subscriber. So it's sitting over the same uh, the same message pipe that your other devices are. It's listening for things, and it can make transformations on the wire. It can do substitutions, do mathematical calculations. We can pull in things from other streams um, or the device shadow, uh, and we'll talk about the device shadow again in a second. The mathematical operations and the context-based helper functions are really important too. So I can do things like pull a variable out of my topic and inject it back in the message. Or if you look at some of the other um, integrations that we have with AWS services, we'll start to see some powerful patterns around the roles that didn't emerge. So the same message, if I said, every time I see red come over this topic, I want to flip it to green. Now, when the light is sitting on that topic as a subscriber, he'll only see the transform message. So the rules engine will flip that on the fly. The light doesn't have to worry about doing any of that logic for you. So just to, here we go. Obviously, this is not the uh, complete scenario. So what we wanted to do is sort of give you an example of uh, some of the other patterns that you can see. So some of these functions, like starts with and the topic, and e even if you go into this, this uh, JSON or, or the statement a little bit more, you can see we're comparing values that are within the sensor payload. So we know that's not the full story. You also want to take this data and ingest it into other parts of AWS where you're running your business systems like Kinesis and Dynamo and things like that. So we've added support for a whole set of AWS services, and through those, you can get to other services like uh, Amazon Machine Learning. So now we can respond to the fleet to, to a single unit. We can do more than one action. So we can start to daisy chain a bunch of these actions together. So I can see that I'm still gonna change the color of the light bulb uh, as it comes over the wire, but I'm also gonna process that message into Dynamo. Uh, I'm also gonna send it to a Lambda function. So at the end of the chain, I can start running my own business logic in other languages like Java or now Python using Lambda. So Dynamo has an interesting uh, extra use case here. If Dynamo is an actor both in the evaluation of the SQL statement and on the end of the road here. So if you think about machines that maybe have a relationship to um, a human, like a fleet and the driver, uh, the, the truck itself may not know who's in the cab at that time. But that data needs to be secured in a different way once it hits your back end system. So you have to do things like look at the driver's privacy laws and what state is he in and how long has he been behind the wheel. So Dynamo, we can use Dynamo in context of the rule. You can start to say things like, if you know, this machine ID, this truck ID comes in, I want to query Dynamo to see what driver ID is in the cab and from there run a second set of logic on top of that. So that's a pretty powerful pattern. Some of the other things we wanted to mention through some of these direct integrations, we have access to uh, the rest of the AWS community. So we can go from Dynamo into Redshift or from S3 into uh, machine learning or MapReduce, things like that. These are the actors that are primary in the statements. You can put even Firehose, which was just announced yesterday. You can take the MQTT data stream, 
reprocess it and put it right onto, onto, the, uh, onto a firehose queue. So SNS is the one I wanted to talk about also. SNS has primary support. Obviously, it's used for companion apps, like um, uh, I have an app that maybe turns my home vacuum on and off or my lights on and off. So you would get push notifications through SNS from device uh, events. But SNS has another unique property. It lets you uh, post to external web services. So now you might want to take your telematic data that's coming to AWS over MQTT, but post it to a third-party web service. Or maybe you want to start looking at weather data in context of the sensor feeds. So you can use SNS to get that protected link to, to, bless you, to, the, uh, to the external web service, uh, and, and also the retry support that, that we, uh, we've already come to, come to use there. So. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. So I'm Jinesh Waria. I'm, an, I'm uh, the senior technical program manager for the IoT side. And today I'm going to be, I'm, I'm super excited about it, not only because I've been here at almost nine years, and this is the, the, the be, one of the best things I feel I've worked on at AWS. So we were wondering, what is, some, what is a simple device that we can help to help you understand the power of AWS IoT that we have launched today? Not only that it, it gives you the opportunity to learn about all the different features about AWS IoT, but also it also so cool that helps you build something really, really new. How many people know about the Amazon Dash button? Okay, few, cool. Um, based on the same Dash button hardware, what we have done is we have built something which is you know, going to take the, what, whatever Kyle talked about in the last few slides, you know, we took the AWS IoT device SDK, we burned it onto, the, onto this particular you know, hardware, and we are going to make this button a generic button. Now, with this power of AWS IoT, you can basically programmable, it make this button a completely programmable button. So you, you click on it, and instead of ordering something on Amazon, now you have a full control over you know, connecting to AWS, Lambda, SNS, SQS, all the other services that, that uh, Kyle talked about earlier, and, and build whatever you want to build out of that. Um, so this is our sort of a simple Hello World application now, in the world of IoT, you know, how do we get started quickly? And so this is a great way to get started. And each and every person in this room is going to get one device as you walk out. So that's going to be done. So I'm going to show you how you get started with this, how you are going to you know, work with it, and you know, to just get a complete feel of, of how, what are the rules engine, what is shadows, what, how, you, how you work around, and so forth. So, so let's get started. So I'm going to take, as you walk out of this room, you're going to get this small little box with the activation code that you would like. This is the button. Oop. All right. This is the button. As you can see, it's, it's uh, kind of very simple, easy to get started, kind of you know, what you do is basically just click. And out of the box, it will work. So we have re we configured the reInvent Wi-Fi and SSID all on this, so you don't have to configure a Wi-Fi all on it. And when you go home, you can, of course, configure your own SSID and get it working, too. So when you see this button, as it starts, it connects to Wi-Fi. It's completely a stateless button, and, and you can connect and build whatever you like. Customers, you know, we have always, already seen some amazing innovation that has happened with the, with the button by you know, someone just clicking a button, calling an Uber cab, you know, clicking a button, you know, ordering pizza, click a button, start a car, click a button, no, 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 tweet, face, uh, put a, poke someone on Facebook, and so forth. So you can, you can basically take this power of AWS IoT with a simple device like this and build whatever you like with this you know, complete expansion. So let's see how it will work and kind of walk you through a little bit of more expansion on this side. So when you log in, 
Now, we have built a complete AWS management console that helps you, you now get through all the different resources that AWS provides today, AWS IoT provides today. The things that Kyle talked about, rules, you know, shadows, and, and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this button. There's a device serial number at the back of this button. And I'm going to, this is a device activation code that you will get at the end as well that you need to And I'll activate the button. Cool. So I've activated the button. What happened here is that all the security credentials that Kyle talked about, TLS 1.2, the, the mutual authentication certificates, the keys, the certs, the keys, which have been pre-bugged, baked, and pre uh, no, uh, uh, on, the, on the particular device itself. Now the certificate is going to transfer to your particular own account. So you can now you know, do whatever you want to do with this particular button. And we can't really you know, you know, wait to see what innovation you can. So once you have activated it, all you do is is basically, you know, send me an email. That's a simple, a very simple, uh, you know, getting started. So I'll say, send me an email. And go, you select a role. Role is basically giving you access permission saying that I want AWS IoT to connect to SNS. It's our simple notification service to send me an e email. And then you create a rule. Oh, sorry. First you have to create a topic. Obviously, with SNS, you create a topic, you subscribe to the topic, and you go over there. OK, the rule has been successfully created. So this is the AWS management console for AWS IoT. You can manage all your things. You can manage your certificates. You can manage your policies that are attached to it. You can manage your shadows. You can manage uh, your registry. All the things that you are kind of you know, excited about from managing your you know, devices, your connected devices, all can be managed in a simple user interface. So what just happened here is that I, saw, I basically transferred you know, the button, and now I can see the button here you know, with, in it. And it created all the basic policies, certificates that I need. So I created I, IoT button policy. This button policy basically gives me access to SNS. So the entire service can kind of take example of that. Uh, and there are no multiple different services as well. So now let's see this in, in real action. So so what I did was basically send me an email. But I have also configured some other things also with it. So I can, I can attach a rule, and the rule will, will no, I, can, I can say, go execute a Lambda function. Within the Lambda function, as Kyle was mentioning, you, know, you can you get access to the, ex, uh, the, to the whole you know, external endpoint. So I can call Twilio to get a call. I can call you know, Facebook to, get, to, to, to do whatever I want. So in this particular case, you know, when, I, when I sort of click the button, I will basically get an S, uh, I've configured this particular button right now to do um, SNS. So I'll get basically a simple email. So I'll click a button, and as you will see, oh, sorry. Right, so, so this is a button. And as you can see, as, as it's so quick. We just click a button, and you get a green, and I'll get an email. So in this case, I, if I use my, my simple button, which is you know, the button that you might have. I have a special button, which is going to be always on. And in this case, my button is going to be a simple button that will send me a text message. So as you can see, it is currently connecting to Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz. Um, it is going to DHCP connecting. And then as soon as it connects to Wi-Fi, you'll see a green light. And you will see a text message that comes in quickly. Test from Lambda. So what just happened here is, is basically Sorry, I'm kind of learning this new system. 
But what just ha happened here was I have you log into AWS Management Console. You log into the Lambda function. Log into US East. I have a cloud function that I have connected, and that's where I got the e SMS message. Now I'm just going to say I want to create something cool. I want to really build out uh, an easier way uh, to call my wife uh, with just when, when this button. So I'm going to say like. Change that. Save this. And test. As you know, Lambda is a stateless compute, event-driven compute service. You don't have to manage any servers. You don't have to manage any, comp any uh, load balancing and so forth. Everything, as you see. So my wife's name is Kathy Dulia. I clicked. I tested it. And it just worked. Now I'm going to. I'm going to simply click the button. This is going to, again, no, connect to Wi-Fi, connect to the, the AWS um, IoT, and quickly go to Lambda. Lambda will function will execute, which I showed you here, which was previously sending a text message. Now I modified that function to call me rather than. So it will call my wife, call me, and create a conference around it. So it's a kind of a wife, wife SOS uh, for all the cool stuff. So as you can see, the button will connect. Oops, sorry. <laughs> and as soon as you see the, the colors, I got a text message. And I will go back and. So this rule has been basically connected to, so what just worked here is, is, is a button that will help you understand and create and have, connect, connect. So well, let's see a little bit more. So, so I gave this to button, which I talked about you know, to my, to, to my uh, uh, nine month old, and he was starting clicking as well. So this, you already have a competition uh, you know, to, to basically do whatever you like on this. To, to build whatever you like in this. And also, at the same time, we are launching um, uh, an AWS IoT mega contest on Hackster.io. So we would love each and every one of you to build something really cool. Think about this from a company perspective as to what what you can integrate with this simple button and leverage the power of AWS IoT to do whatever you can by building rules or building actions and so forth. So let's see how actually this worked in the back end. So the button is basically you know, creating a rule. But, sorry, button has the certificates uh, baked into it. These certificates are attached to a particular policy. The policy has acts saying, this particular device has access to only certain services. So you have full control of your, of your device itself and the access control over it. It is attached to a particular rule. And rule has multiple things, like the SQL statement, uh, which, which Kyle was talking about. At the same time, it has certain actions. The action in this particular case was go and, and, and uh, no, call Lambda. Um, and this in Lambda, I had a simple permission saying, how do I actually get, get, no, call this particular function and no, call Twilio? So within my simple example I had was have a simple Twilio function that will call me or call, my, uh, call the S SNS. So in this case, no, it, it, did, it, it, it just did that. So what we learned was basically how it worked out on the, on the AWS management console, as well as uh, no, how the Lambda functions are basically executed. The other cool thing about this is that you can hook this up into basically whatever you like. So in this case, you, know, you can hook up a button to call DynamoDB. So this is a classic telemetry da you know, you know, data, or when lots of devices are sending lots of data, whether it's a car or whether it's a, uh, um, I don't know, um, a, a drop cam camera or whatever, you can basically have them have the devices send logs data directly to DynamoDB. 
So DynamoDB, can, you, know, you can query that data and create a way to basically you know, see all that data in an aggregate fashion so that you can run all sorts of predictions, algorithms, rules, aggregation on top of that data itself. So what we have done here is, is, is a simple dashboard. So every button that you click today at reInvent it will be live here. We have given these buttons, several buttons already yesterday uh, to, to a lot of people. And the, the, there is a simple way to kind of see uh, how you can leverage you know, the AWS button to, um, to see that. That bottom grid is really a toggle square. So whenever, every, when it shows yellow, it's basically the buttons are in our current account. And when you click on it, it actually will pop and, and, and show you. So we'll keep the screen up at all times in all our IoT sessions so you can see what's going on with the button. When you see a green light, that means that it, ha it is going to go um, one more level up and it has transferred from our account to, the, to your own account so you can do whatever you, can, what you would want to do with it. So how it worked here is also very simple. It, it is, uh, so reInvent, connecting to DynamoDB and the dashboard, all aggregating the data in a complete serverless architecture that you have to not worry about scaling or managing the servers at all. So this is kind of cool to see how you can uh, no, leverage all of this. Cool. Over to you, Kyle, for, for the, another awesome thing that we have with AWS IoT. Great, thanks. So uh, we're going to talk some more about the device shadow. Um, just to create chaos, because I like to do that, we hid like 10 buttons around the room, so you might have one. If you could help us and build a projector switcher, that'd be cool. Um, so the shadow, it, it, like I said, it's a virtual representation of your device in the cloud. So it gives the application, the web mobile application developer, a way to interact with our REST API and not have to worry about what protocol that the device is talking. So one of the key important kind of use cases to consider is um, the device can be offline. So he actually is also invisible. But the, you can interact with the shadow, and what he'll do is he'll persist state until the device comes back. So when that device wakes up, he can have an MQTT or an HTTP topic or API that he hits and says, hey, what's this supposed state I'm supposed to be in? Then he can react. He can act on that. Um, he can error, he can talk back and say, yes, I have reported that new state, and then the shadow will resync. So that works over it's kind of a, a series of steps. Um, the last reported state is always kept uh, in a persistent JSON data store. So up to an 8K document can describe the state of the shadow of your device. So I can start to say, here's my array of uh, sensors, uh, what their last reported values are, here's the last state of the set of actuators that this device has control over, and you can always query that from an application. Now I can also request to change the state. So at this point, this is kind of where the shadow becomes an actor in the system. So the device says, okay, your desired state is uh, on, but your last reported state is off. Now whether or not the device is connected, the shadow will start becoming an active actor in the system. So he'll have messages available that you can subscribe to over MQTT, or you can wake up and hit the shadow API to say, is there a delta for my uh, desired versus reported state? And then you'll be able to talk back uh, to the shadow in the cloud. Again, this is, a, this is a pattern that we're introducing to make it easier to bridge the gap between web and mobile development and connected product development. And it's not a requirement by any means. It, now, if you have a device, this is very common also, that's already in the field, it's already using MQTT, you can connect to us with whatever's on there now, as long as it supports a TLS mutual auth uh, certificate. Um, so it, without ever changing the device now, he can start to sub subscribe and publish to shadow topics uh, and interact with the system that maybe newer devices are becoming more intelligent around. So this is a quick example. So um, the three different parts of the JSON doc. So we have the desired state, which is red, the last reported state, which is green, and then you can listen, as a, as a device, you can listen to just the delta topic, which is very important when you're looking at things like over a cellular or a very expensive connection. So all of these topics are in a dedicated uh, topic space called $AWS. We borrowed this pattern from MQTT's $Sys topic. Uh, from there, we have a aggregate things topic. So if you're an application developer and you want to look at the state in, of, in the state of change of all of your devices, 
you can have a rule over dollar w AWS things pound, which is the asterisk topic, send all that to Kinesis, get a time ordered stream of how all the devices are acting in your entire fleet at once. All right. So let's see this in action with the button itself. So we have also implemented shadows. As Carl was mentioning, this is sort of a no, really cool abstraction in the cloud, a virtual representation of your device in the cloud. So you can manage all your applications, uh, or sorry, your devices can be managed by your applications via the shadow itself. So the, the, the power of the shadow obviously lies when you know, multiple devices are connected uh, and having their shadows, and your one single admin management console or, man, or your app or your mobile app you know, can connect to the shadow and talk to all, of, all at once. Now, in the, in the context of the, the button, now, we would like to kind of show you a very simple demo, but it's also really, really cool to see how it works. So I'm going to switch back and kind of show you how this works. So this is the, the button. And you know, as you can see, the button has a simple LED on it. This LED is a color LED. Now, and it is kind of a little bit difficult to see, but basically the LED is going to glow when, it, when you click a button, it, it do, does an HTTP publish onto an AWS IoT service. And then it calls Lambda, Lambda calls Twilio, Twilio calls me back uh, using the service itself, right? You can hook it up to do anything that you like. Now, in this particular case, when it comes back, it gives me an acknowledgment code. And my acknowledgment code is basically a color sequence itself. So I can say, I want to change the shadow of my device, then have a different color sequence for it. Basically, this is allowing you to, be, to change any attribute that the shadow might have, right? If the device has multiple different sensors, each sensor can be uh, as an attribute inside the, inside the uh, session, inside the shadow as well, so you can change that shadow from any application itself. So you don't have to worry about you know, device connecting uh, you know, directly to the application itself because it's connecting the shadow. So in this case, I had hooked up this particular button to, to, the, to the Lambda uh, call with the Twilio. So as you can see, I click on it, and you will see um, you know, the code, and it's also calling my wife, right? <laughs> So also I click on a button, and you can see how quick it is. It's going all the way. Right, I'll do it one more time. <laughs> so cool. It works. So the best part about this is it went, this request from Vegas went all the way to US East Virginia, came back, called Twilio, and called my service in a fraction of a second. So you can basically, it's so cool. I, I can do this all day also. <laughs> and so is my nine month old. OK. So the other thing which I have built, I built that from a, to explain the power of this is, is a simple Android application. Now, the Android application is, is a, no, a, a simple app that uses AWS Mobile SDK and then connects, uh, connects that to the, to, to, the, to the button itself. So in this case, I, as I said, it is a simple color sequence that I would like to update. So the next time, so let's say I want to change to a new color. I will say, which are your favorite colors, audience? Yellow? Magenta. Magenta. And? Cyan, let's say. C, OK? And then I do update shadow. And I click here, and you can see as well as my call. So you, I can change it back and say, you can see the color sequence again. I'll say, no, green, oh, sorry, if I can type, green. Tell me, audience. R uh, red and blue, OK? And I do update shadow, and I click. So it says green, red, oh, a green. Sorry, again. <laughs> so are they green, red, blue? And it calls my wife too. <laughs> so 
what you just saw was basically an, an, a mobile application connecting to AWS IoT and focusing on, on building that application and, and no, uh, updating the shadow without really having to worry about all the different things about connecting to devices. Now imagine the power now. Like I can now have you know, multiple devices connected to my mobile phone. I can manage all my devices on the mobile phone with, by just interacting with their shadow. I can have you know, the shadow connect back to the rules as well as those rules connect back to the shadow too. So in a very powerful fashion. And for that, you have to come to our new other session at, at uh, 245, where we are going to dive a little bit more into how rules work, how shadow works, and how you can build a connected device using rules and shadows. All right. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the registry. So all these things are happening in the cloud. Uh, now, how do I define what this device is capable of and what it does? So we can also start tagging devices with things like um, you know, its version number, its serial number. The last time, maybe we had a warranty call out. So we, we wanted to provide a way where you could start to identify and describe how a device works in the field. We could see this being used for external systems like um, Salesforce.com. We have a partner in the expo hall already that's building a link between those t systems today. So device management, this is a common pattern in IoT, and if you look at this from kind of our perspective, we're doing the same sort of thing. We're approaching it from a building blocks uh, perspective and seeing, seeing kind of how customers and partners can put this together. So firmware update, another common pattern in the field. Um, I have a firmware update. I, update, I upload that to S3, right? So S3 has event hooks for Lambda. So that file hits S3, it triggers a Lambda function. Lambda runs whatever business logic you have behind it to define how do I want to notify my fleet. And at this point, you can start making decisions that are kind of in a more global scope than just one AWS region. So I can use that Lambda function or Dynamo streams or some other way to hop from one region to another and start up updating devices across my fleet in a sampling that's more global. Whoops, I didn't actually mean to go through that. Um, so yeah, you can track these sort of progresses with um, with another update, once, once the devices report back, they say, hey, I've, I've updated my version, they publish something back, those rules are processed, and maybe this is uh, stored in Dynamo or back to the registry. So that's the, um, that's kind of the overall picture. And you know, I, I think obviously pricing is pretty important for this, so we, we wanna be upfront and kind of show you exactly what this is gonna cost you. So it's a pay-as-you-go service. Like I said, it's a fully managed service. You don't have to set up any shards. You don't have to tell us the size of your fleet. We charge in buckets of messages that go over the publish or the subscribe pattern. So anything moved from that part of the system through the device gateway into other parts of AWS, you are not charged that message fee. So you'll just be charged fees for your Dynamo usage or the, your Lambda invocations or things like that. So it's a very simple service, um, very easy to use. We launched in four regions this morning under beta. Um, so the, you can go to the console and the CLI and start, uh, start experimenting with it. I wanted to run through one, run through one quick example of kind of a, just a, maybe an example scenario and what this would look like overall. So let's assume there's 100 sensors in the field. They're all publishing one message once per minute. Um, over the course of a month, that's you know, roughly 4.3 million messages. Uh, so that maybe has one metering unit that's listening to the entire fleet. So at that point, you're kind of doubling, doubling your traffic. Everything's coming in. One guy's listening to it on the way out. At the same time, I want to take all of my sensor data and store it in Dynamo. Now this is a decision we've made consciously because our customers have told us they want the flexibility to decide how often and how long sensor data should persist in your environment so that you can do things like an analytics and data mining down the road. So we have not set any sort of uh, uh, bar here. We're not gonna expire your data. If you pump it into Dynamo, it'll stay as long as you wanna keep it there. You can take that from Dynamo streams and run it through other parts of AWS. So again, that, that piece of the, the message pipeline uh, is included with the service. So the publishers and the subscribers over that 101 devices we talked about, um, this is kind of what the price breakdown looks like. So if you look at just the devices in, in the field, because this is obviously important for bill of materials costs and things like that, you know, you're looking at roughly 21 cents a device uh, per month for a pretty chatty device once per minute. So pricing is very straightforward. You can see that on the website today too. Sure. 
So one of our main design tenets for this service was to make it extremely easy for customers to get started with AWS IoT. And one of, uh, one of the main things in that was, how do we get started using the SDKs, using you know, the different elements? We want anyone to build a device, a connected device, quickly. We want every developer to take advantage of the large, no, the Internet of Things um, no, a, a, no, a paradigm shift that is happening to connect your chair, your, your bag, your connected, no, your, your vacuum cleaner, or to, to do whatever, whatever you can do. So what we are releasing as a part of this is a very simple, easy to use you know, CSDK. Now CSDK, you don't have to use you know, a, a, an SDK to get started with AWS IoT. All of our APIs are not restful APIs that you can connect to and leverage and, and use these as the case as your reference implementation. And so there, these are you know, available for a variety of different you know, embedded OS platforms already tried and tested and so forth, which I'll talk about later. Now, I'm a big Node.js fan, and a lot of, lot of different you know, you know, embedded uh, you know, Linux that are running that, that, that comes with, the, with the, the kit itself or the boards and so forth can run a full-blown Linux. So like Raspberry Pi, you know, BeagleBone, and Intel Edisons, as well as you know, BeagleBone and DragonBoard and other co the really nice you know, kits that are out there. So they can run a powerful JavaScript SDK. All of these functionality leverages, you know, they have, they have, they have uh, security baked into it so you can you know, leverage it outside of the box. Yeah, they have shadow implementation, they have rules implementation, and all of that. And all, of course, you can manage through all that using the you know, console. Now, we, we, we know in the world of Internet of Things, and it comes to devices, it's very important that these devices are constrained devices. So you don't have to build and take the entire SDK. You just take the pieces that you really need, and in fact, just you know, make a call to a publish call or a subscribe call to MQTT, to AWS services, uh, AWS IoT service, and leverage that too. We know Arduino is very important, and we love it. And so we have also included, also in, in, uh, you know, releasing the Arduino library for Yoon, so you can take advantage of that and then and, you know, quickly get started with the Arduino uh, environment as well. So with this, we are also launching you know, one of our most important programs with partners to make this extremely easy for makers and manufacturers to take advantage of AWS IoT in a more cost-effective way. So we are launching a very important program called the AWS IoT Hardware Program, where partners can come in and you know, certify or you know, validate all their you know, software that we can run and make it so easy for the makers and manufacturers to, to take advantage of cloud in a more effective way. We feel every connected device is connected to AWS in a, in a, in a no, no, very effective way that can send large amount of data in a very you know, easy way to do it. So, so you know, we are launching with a lot of um, partners already. Uh, we, have, you know, uh, we have these you know, specialized, as a part of the program, they are launching you know, you know, these kits that are available on Amazon.com today. And you can buy them, you can get started quickly, and really you know, accelerate your cloud-powered prototype development process so quickly. For example, you know, we have a device with, you know, uh, with MediaTek, MediaTek is uh, having a Linkit one board that offers you know, Wi-Fi, BLE, GPRS, uh, GPRS, SMS uh, capabilities, as well as, of course, GPS. And, uh, so you can you know, build a co complete connected car application along with this. It comes bundled with lots of different sensors, as well as the MCU board, and a cool getting started guide that has been optimized for, the, for, for using the AWS IoT device SDK. We also have you know, some industrial application you know, device uh, app, you know, um, partners here, like Broadcom and, and you know, Texas Instruments, Renesas, and Marvell. You know, these are you know, a lot of our customers are currently using all of these you know, different you know, partners to get their connected devices, and they want to get started extremely quickly with this. So all these kits that you are seeing here. Now, these are different kits, all fully compiled, ready to go. Open the box as a great experience. And I want to call out Broadcom and Marvell here that you know, when you open the box, the SDK comes you know, pre-baked, pre-flashed, you know, pre 
along with the sample application onto the device. So you just hook it up to the power, and you open up an access soft, soft AP mode comes up on now go to 192.168.0.1, and you can basically log in and upload your AWS IoT certificates and get this thing going as quickly as possible. Now we want to, to, to make this so simple and easy for customers to use that it's there. One of the more important things I want to highlight is that you can connect any device to AWS with any operating system. So here we have, you no, know, no, this is a variety of the, the, the boards and, and the partners. You know, Broadcom uses ThreadX, Dragonboard uses Ubuntu, you know, Renesas uses Micrium OS. You know, these are real industrial you know, applications that are being built today with IoT as the, as the base. So I highly recommend you to take advantage of these. Go to that partner booth. All of, all of these partners have a booth at the, at the AWS uh, Expo Hall, and they are giving away lots of kits. So take advantage of this. This is a great way to get started, and we just can't wait to, to see you know, what you do with AWS IoT and what you build with it. And there's innovation everywhere, and we'd love to know and get your feedback on how we can continuously improve these services for, for our customers and for you. Now, this is, again, day one for us. Things might be you know, still launching. So as you go walk out uh, you know, and take your AWS IoT button, you know, you know, play with the AWS IoT service, and, and really take advantage of you know, the scale as well as the, the, the number of features we have. In addition, you know, we want to make this not just you know, uh, you know, easy on the prototype development process. But we also want to make it so easy for you that once you come up with your great idea and you want to build your connected device and you build your prototype, we want you to take that prototype and go production. So we have all these awesome products, all these awesome partners you know, that will help you in step-by-step -step fashion, fashion that can, that can uh, go with all this uh, customer. We have Seed Studio, who has provided four kits. We have uh, you know, you know, MediaTek, Broadcom, Renaissance, and all those. All of them are working with all these partners to get this thing going quickly for you from idea to production, to, uh, from idea to prototype to production itself. So we want customers to build, we want anyone to build you know, you know, a, a device quickly. Just like if you see on the mobile application, you know, appli the, the, the app world has been democratized. A 10-year-old can build an application on a mobile phone. Today, that is changing. Today, you know, we, are, we are feeling that we, we can build great you know, devices very quickly. And you know, anyone can build an object, a democratization of object creation. And you're building up this. So you talk, as Kyle saw, talked about, you know, we're launching with Device Gateway, a powerful pub sub broker that will help you, you know, publish and subscribe very quickly. You know, we have a, 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 a very flexible rules engine that connects you to the, to the rest of the AWS ecosystem, as well as to the external endpoints, your own APIs and so forth. We have a powerful shadow service that will help you, you know, build great, powerful, scalable applications and registry to manage your devices as well. You know, we are releasing lots of device SDKs so you can take advantage in whatever programming paradigm you would like. It's, and leverage you know, Hackster.io contest to build something cool, you know, poster project, and win even more further prizes for it. And take advantage of these IoT starter kits so that you, know, you can you know, you know, take, you know, build your device very quickly in there. So we have lots of different sessions also right after this that will dive in more details into all these sessions and from IoT security to you know, rules and shadow, diving in with some awesome demos that our team has built. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, take advantage of these in, in a way that you would like. And I li in with that, I like on behalf of Kyle as well as myself, I'd like to uh, you know, thank you for coming to this as well as you know, feel free to you know, build out uh, great IoT products using AWS IoT. Thank you very, very much.